What good are junior techies? My name is Mr. P. Here we're looking at question three of the worksheet. I'm going to be taking you through this question. I do hope you've got a hold of the worksheet and worksheet memorandum and theory booklet and you've been trying some of these questions on your own. But here we're going to be working through them together and I'm going to be showing you how to do a little bit of question analysis to help you better understand exactly what the question is asking you, which will teach you some valuable skills to take into your final exam as well. All right, so here we're going to be looking at question three. And it shows us a diagram of a section through an alveolus as well as a blood capillary in the human body. And we can see I've identified them here with the arrow. You'll see the alveoli being the first arrow at the top and then the blood capillary a little bit down towards the bottom. So by referring to this diagram, we now need to answer the questions 3.1 to 3.6. All right, let's have a look at question 3.1. Name the type of epithelial tissue numbered 1 and 2. Now, looking at the diagram over there, it's, it's quite difficult to see. So what I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to blow it up a little bit so that we can identify exactly what is going on there. Right, so let's just have a look. Question or, or number 1 and 2. If we have a look closely, that's them over there. And it's a very, very specific type of epithelial tissue. And we'll know that this is a gas exchange surface which, need, which needs to be quite thin. And both of these surfaces are lined with an epithelial tissue that is thin. And this should link you to or automatically bring you to the conclusion that we're looking at a squamous epithelium surrounding the blood vessels and then obviously the outside of the alveoli as well bringing these two surfaces as gas exchange surfaces quite close together. Now it asks us to identify the blood cell labeled 3. So of the sort of um, enlarged area over there, we can see that we're looking at that. That being our red blood cell, so that's what I would write down, red blood cell or RBC. So the, the, the shortened RBC sometimes is accepted, but my suggestion here is that if you're going to be using the abbreviation RBC, make sure somewhere in your question paper you have written down the fact that RBC is red blood cell. Okay, so that the examiner knows you know what you're talking about there. Question 3.3, .3, what pigment is found? In the cell mentioned in 3.2, it's the red blood cell. So here we can identify or link that to hemoglobin, the pigment that's been referred to there. Question 3.4, which type of blood enters the blood capillary at A? So by which type of blood they're actually referring to, is it oxygenated or deoxygenated? So we can assume that blood arriving at an alveoli would not have large or high concentrations of oxygen in it quite yet, but rather have high concentrations of carbon dioxide. So I would say blood entering the blood capillary at A would be my deoxygenated blood. And the blood leaving the blood capillary at B would then have been oxygenated through that whole gas exchange process taking place at the alveoli, between the blood capillary and the alveoli. 3.5, in which form is most oxygen carried in the blood? And that would be as oxyhemoglobin, because oxygen and hemoglobin for each other, they have quite a high affinity, so oxygen is attached to hemoglobin quite easily and is transported in the blood combined to hemoglobin. Supply two visible structural adaptations. So this is important. Visible structural. So we have to be able to see it in the diagram. That allow or that make alveoli well suited for gas exchange. Two visible structural adaptations. So here we're looking at round alveolus is a large surface area for gas exchange. There is also a thin surface of squamous epithelium for rapid diffusion. And that is only two of a few that we could probably identify here. All right. But here they're talking only about the alveoli, so I would stick to those two first before we identify any of the other potential options that we may see. 
All right, Junior Tiki, so looking at question three, hopefully this has given you an indication or has given you a little bit of insight in how to approach a question like this. Um, thanks so much for joining me. Make sure again that you get a hold of the theory booklet, worksheet and worksheet memorandum. Work through those questions and then refer back to the video just to see that you are on the right track. All right, this is Mr. P signing off. Do hope to see you again soon.